In my last video, I talked about how various traumas, repressions, and different energies need to come out of us during periods of psychosis in order for us to heal bipolar disorder. However, there is one part of the healing that, while not so disturbing for the bipolar person, can be extremely disturbing for our families. So disturbing, in fact, that they could motivate them to want you medicated for your entire life. And what is this horrific thing that needs to be stopped at all costs? The truth. Family secrets. Everybody's got them. And they're not all so horrible. For example, when I found out when I was about 15 that every time my grandfather talked about his time in college, he was actually talking about the time he spent in jail for fraud. As it turned out, for years, college had been the family code word for prison. And then there was the time I found out I was part Micmac Indian. Actually, I found that pretty cool. However, for most of us, the truths we need to talk about during psychosis are much more serious than that. Family secrets such as rape or incest, if mentioned, can tear apart the entire family structure. Now, these secrets could be of a personal nature, like telling the family that you're gay. It could be just stating the obvious, like perhaps that your parents haven't loved each other for 20 years, even though they keep acting like they do. Or it could be something that you did that you consider to be a sin. And you know, it was from working with a few people in psychosis, as well as receiving a lot of emails, that I gained a new appreciation for the ritual of confession within the Catholic Church. Because it became apparent to me that a lot of us, maybe all of us, are carrying around stuff that we want to get off our chest. Now in my case, my parents were quite receptive to what I had to say, but I know for the most part, parents usually aren't. Typical responses from parents when bipolar people bring up the truth are things like, well, what are you getting so emotional about? Or, you're crazy, your thoughts are wrong. Or, I don't understand you, haven't we given you a good life? These are all ways that the family denies the truth of what the bipolar person is saying. And then to make matters worse, when confronted with all this truth, they take the person to the psychiatrist who covers the whole thing over with the biggest lie of all, which is that the person is mentally ill. That's why they're having these thoughts and feelings. The reason they're mentally ill is they've got a chemical imbalance, they need drugs, and their thoughts and feelings are basically to be ignored. And of course, this is a huge relief for the family who can now wash their hands of the whole experience, knowing that there's nothing really wrong with them or their family. The only problem is that their daughter has a little bit too much serotonin going to the brain. Or maybe it's dopamine. Or maybe it's not enough serotonin. I don't know, I get mixed up. So when the opportunity presents itself, clearing of the conscience of personal secrets, family secrets, untold truths, sins of the past, can be a very healing experience when you're in psychosis. Now, there's one family secret that is, in a sense, universal to all families, and yet most people are completely unaware of it. And that secret is that on this planet today, it is highly unlikely that you are going to have two parents that love you unconditionally. What is far more likely, even in the best of families, even in the most healthy of families, is that you may have one parent that loves you unconditionally. You feel their presence of love any time you're with them, and you feel that you can do no wrong with that one parent, but the other parent will never give you a break, never let you feel like you're completely worthy of their love. If you're doing well in high school, they'll push you, why aren't you getting a part-time job? Once you graduate university, they'll be pushing you to get a full-time job. Then once you've got that, when are you getting married? When are you having kids? When are you planning for your retirement? It never ends. So why does your father or mother do that to you? Why do they hold back love? Well, they don't do it consciously. They do it because their father or mother, your grandparents, held back love from them. And the reason your grandparents held back love is because your great-grandparents held back even more love. In fact, the further you go back in time, generation to generation, what you'll see is an increasing level of general coldness and rigidity among the generations. And that's because the further back you go in your family history, the lower the level of consciousness you will encounter among the people there. And with a lower level of consciousness comes a lower capacity for compassion, not only with your own family, but with other people around you. And the two best examples of this lower level of consciousness is what was going on with women's rights a hundred years ago. Basically, women weren't even treated as citizens. And then, of course, there's the racism. You really think Barack Obama would have beat Teddy Roosevelt? 
Somehow I think not. Now please keep in mind when I talk about a generation I am referring generally and that in any generation of people or in any culture some people were ahead of others. So that someone like Abe Lincoln or Nelson Mandela were clearly ahead of the level of consciousness of their own cultures. And what's the end result of receiving this coldness that has come down from our ancestors? Well, it basically leaves us with a feeling of a void in our soul, a sense of emptiness in our life, because we didn't receive all of the unconditional love that we could have when we were young. Now the good news is that there's a tremendous opportunity to heal this void in the soul when a person's in psychosis. The only trouble is how you go about healing this void in the soul is very controversial in itself. Because what it requires is that when the person in psychosis asks for affectionate love, that that love be delivered by the support people or by the therapist. So in practical terms what that means is that the person in psychosis may look to a supporter for a tremendously warm, affectionate, loving embrace. And while the support person needs to maintain the sacred spirit of the experience not allowing things to become sexual, the intensity of affection shared could be extremely intimate, the type that we usually only reserve for our lovers. Now, this kind of contact is considered illegal today because of the risk of sexual impropriety. And in fact, the great psychiatrist, Dr. John Weir Perry, lost his license because he was providing this kind of warm affection to female clients. However, Dr. Stangroff insists on the therapeutic benefits of this approach, saying that basically once your soul's void is filled, you're no longer looking for mother figures or father figures in your relationships, and you can find someone that's better suited to your true personality. So just to finish off, whether you're trying to fill this soul's void, or whether you're trying to speak truths or personal secrets that have been hidden for years, both of these movements are trying to bring a deeper level of integrity to your life as you move forward. So while what you're doing or saying may shock people or rock the boat for a short period of time, down the road these movements are going to make for a better life for you, making you healthier and more alive. It'll also allow you to raise your kids whenever you have them with a little more warmth than you had growing up. And finally, please remember that while all of these issues have a lot to do with our families, especially our parents, try to keep in mind that chances are if you've got it rough, probably your parents had it even tougher from their parents, and that the people out there with the biggest problems to deal with are the people with no parents at all. Next up, how to deal with and heal aggression during psychosis.